Hi everybody, it's Christopher. Happy holidays. Are you making lots of things for the holidays, for gifts, for your friends and family? Okay, so now, again, the rope bowls are so popular. Every time I make a new one and post it on my Facebook groups and other Facebook groups, I'm, the, the, the people responding to them is great. And I get tons and tons of questions. And I always refer them back to my, you know, my YouTube channel for them to watch and learn. And, you know, I have done so many of them. I've done this one, which you guys have seen. I've done this one. I've gifted some already. I've gift, gifted a lot of these already, believe it or not. This one is another one. You see, the difference between these two is one is done with blue thread and one's done with a, a violet purple thread that's variegated. And you can see the difference in color, but it's the same bowl. Isn't that cool? And this one here, this was done with an orange variegated and it gave a different look to that. This was the Dollar Tree rope. This was the rope from the um, home improvement stores. Really cool. Um, this rope bowl, oh, I love this one. This is one of my favorites. I know I'll be giving this away, but boy, I want to keep it. This this is that rope from um, Harbor Freight and uh, decorative stitching with variegated thread. I love this love this kind of like an Aztec look you know what I mean then this is one of the first ones you saw me use this was that rope from the home improvement store and then most recently I did these and these are still drying I made two of them this is very gay thread this one here I started with two two threads in the top needle and this is very very soft rope this was very soft rope this one here um, so I was able to use, um, I still used a, uh, the leather needle size 18 and I did, uh, sewing around and then I think I switched to a top stitch needle when I was doing this and said, because I wanted to do add metallic thread to this. So I switched to a size 16 top stitch needle and I sewed it around, changed the colors, blended them did it in the bobbin. I added, um, I also adjusted my tension, adjusted my tension so some of the colors would peek through on the bottom from the top. You see that? Isn't that cool? And in the bobbin you can, you can wind metallic thread, you can wind uh, the, I used brown serger thread when I made these. These were made with brown serger thread. And then you finished, I finished the top with a satin stitch. And the satin stitch uh, was gold metallic thread blended with um, brown serger thread in the same needle. Top stitch size 16. I think I used a 16 on this one. Yeah. Top stitch size 16. Uh, two threads in one needle. It was the metallic and the brown serger thread. The brown serger thread is finer because you know the metallic thread is a little thicker. So I did that like this. And I satin stitched and went over it a few times to give it this look. Isn't that beautiful? To me, this is very artsy looking. I mean, this is real artsy looking. And as I, I told one of my friends online, I said, uh, Facebook friends, I said, you never run out of ideas. And she said, these are really looking like art bowls. And I said, well, they are. And for inspiration, I Googled art bowls, you know, to see, to get inspired. And then this one was my latest. This is that rope bowl from the dollar store. This was green. So you can see this was the green rope I used. And then I used variegated serger thread, which was this one right here. And a decorative stitch. I used a decorative stitch. And then I did um, silver metallic thread to serge a satin stitch on the edge. Isn't that beautiful? So the possibilities are limitless, and this was a, a decorative satin stitch. Now I showed you how to make these bowls on a upper line, midline Janome. I showed you on an entry level computerized brother. So you you guys can make these on any machine. You just have to have the right needle, which I show you in my videos, the right needles to use, the setup, everything. It's it's uh, the possibilities are endless and I've showed you in many of my videos how to set up for metallic threads so 
if you're new to my channel, welcome, because there's so much that you can learn by watching my videos. And I hope you do watch more of my videos, because you'll learn so much. And I'm here to help you. See, I don't do a lot of tutorials on creating things. But then when I saw these bowls, I thought, well, this would be a good tutorial to do that. Most of my tutorials are basically to show you setup so you have flawless results using your sewing machine. Troubleshooting, how to, you know, embroidery techniques, things like that. So you come to my channel when you want to learn techniques about your machine and you watch my videos. So I did these tutorials uh, on, the, on the, all these other bowls showing you how to make these. And as I said in one of my videos, I had never made these bowls before. I saw everyone doing it with a clothesline and everything, and I made a couple coasters, and I did a video of coasters with a rope like this before, a few years ago, but I never really made the bowls. And then the other day, I saw a rope video bowl, actually it was about two weeks ago, I saw a rope video bowl online, and I thought, you know, I never tried that, I think I'll try it. Well then, I had to, I made one, and I loved it, and let me get that one for you. All right, here we go. So I made this one. I made this one. And I had enough left over, I made a coaster. And this was from Clothesline. And then I loved it, I really liked it, and I made the little handles on I really liked it, and I said, okay. But, you know, it looks like everyone else is out there. Everyone else is, you know, you got a thousand videos out there of everybody else making the same thing. You know, they may just change the color, they may wrap it in, in um, uh, clo uh, cotton fabric, you know. And they're all looking the same. And I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if we buy rope? You know, what if I look at this rope from the construction stores, you know, from the home improvement stores and from the dollar store, and we turn to something? What about all those decorative stitches we have, and all that thread that we've collected all these years? So as I'm, I was as I was looking at the art bowls online and everything, I started getting these ideas, and I said, okay, I want to do something different. No one else is doing. I mean, that's what I've always done. I wrote a book on pillows and how to do punching with fabric instead of wool roving. You know, everybody else was doing wool roving with the felting machines, and I said, I'm going to do fancy fabrics, and I come up with a whole new concept. When I wrote my book on, pill on bags, all the home sewers at that time were doing cotton fabric Vera Bradley looking bags, and I decided I I'm going to do vinyl, and that took me on the road teaching for all those years. And what's everybody doing today? Everybody's doing vinyl bags today now, you see? So I always want to inspire and do something different than what everybody else is doing. And this is beautiful. I even seen this at the Sam's Club. I went to Sam's Club. They had tote bag made of this like this. And they had like that uh, hay looking burlap color uh, rope sewn on the bottom. So these are very popular out there. And if you want to make these, that's great. If you want to be something different and creative, then you start looking at stuff like this here. Start experimenting to utilize all the things you have all the decorative stitches you have on your sewing machine, all the thread that you have. Um, a lot of this is just sitting in the drawer all these years. You know, like, what am I going to do with it? You know, what am I going to do with it? Well, here is a perfect opportunity. And a lot of you ladies quilt because you don't want to fit your bodies for garment sewing. A lot of you make bags because you want to take those bags and you want to go out and walk around with them and show everybody what you made. And you're proud of that. And that's great because that's why we sew is so we can be... We can learn to make things for ourselves and be self-sufficient and independent. These are a great way to be very creative without garment sewing, without make, having to make a whole big quilt or a wall hanging quilt. These are not that long to make. Now, an average bowl, a bowl like this took me about an hour to make, this one here. And this was my very first bowl. This took me an hour to make. I had no measurements. I went by sight. I just figured it out. You can make your base as big as you want. And then I show you in the video how to make it grow. And I even said to you, to many of you, I said, when you ask me for sizes or dimensions, I don't have recipes. I just create as I sew. So you will figure things out later on also. Like this, this has got a bigger base here. This one's got a bigger base. And this one was just a little smaller base. So you figure it out. But see, what happens is, when you look at it, and you can go as high as you want on the sides. You can go as high as you want on the sides. You see? So the bigger the base, as you see, the less going out this way. It doesn't, it doesn't go out like a V. It goes more up like a vertical, straight vertical position. When you make a smaller base, like this, then when you go to curve up your walls, they start to flare out like this, which gives it a nice look. This one here was a bigger base. 
and if I were to add more rope and go straight up, it would look like this. Okay, does that make sense to all of you? So you experiment and you play and you see what you like. Now this, this one here, this one here, this base was a little smaller than this one and it started to flare out on the sides just a bit. Just a bit. Not as wide as this one flares out. But as you experiment and try, there are so many different ways. But my purpose of making this is to add to all those other videos out there that people are making and showing you how to construct these. I'm showing you how to be more creative with these using your decorative stitches, using different colors of thread, you know, giving you ideas to even finish the edges now. All right, because I, you know, when I first started making these, I was doing these and I was just cutting the edge off. Let's see, I was just cutting it off blunt and sewing it down, so that was good enough for me. And then I got an idea, I was at Sam's Club and I saw them making these rope bowls and they were actually fading it down. And I said, okay, well, how am I gonna do? Well, since this is like a polyester thread, uh, rope, I just cut it to um, grate it and then I used the lighter to melt it, stick it to the side and sew it down. Then when I got to the thinner ropes, like this one, and this one, these were thinner ropes. This is a very soft rope. I mean, I thought, oh, I don't know if this soft rope is going to work, you know, because it's so soft. Um, let me see if I have any left to show you. Yeah, here it is. It's almost like a, it's almost like a sneaker shoestring rope. Okay, that's that's how soft it was. And this was in my drawer for years. And I thought, I don't know if this is going to work very well. But the cool thing is with this, it is, it is a porous. So as I do with all my other bowls that are soft, I will spray them with starch. Now, the reason why I spray them with the starch is because it's safe. It's safe because the starch I use is the water-soluble stabilizer we use when we embroider. Okay, so it's safe against your skin or anything like that. And, you know, if you want to make these really hard, you can use like... Uh, that paste that you, they sell, um, you know what I'm talking, Mod Podge. You can do that, but I just like the starch. The homemade starch that I use and I spray it in here, it's good enough. This is still damp, so it's still, still firming up. This one's still damp, still firming up. But you get these ideas by inspiration all around you. The thing of it is, is do you want it to look like everything else that's out there? And if that's what you want, fine. If you want to be different, then you start finding different ways of creating using everything you have that you never used before. And that's the purpose of why I did these videos, is to bring light to these bowls again, to show you. Like when I wrote my book, Pillows, it was I inspired myself, so I wanted to inspire everybody else to say, guess what? You don't have to use just wool roving to on your felting machine. You can use fancy fabrics to create a whole new look. So... There are people who sew out there that are machine operators. In other words, they, they have to copy exactly what everybody else is doing. They, they can't think on their own. They can't do anything on their own. And that's fine. That's why teachers like us do this to inspire you. Then there are artists out there who are also machine operators, like me, who create these kind of ideas and artistic things to show you, to inspire you. And that's what we're always doing is coming up with something different. You know, everything that everybody sews, someone's already done it. Someone's already done it. Somewhere, someone's already done it. Do we know that someone's already done it? Well, as we see it on YouTube, we don't know, right? But the thing of it is, is that I cannot take credit for the, for, for the invention of rope bowls. That's not, <laughs> I did not invent these. I did not invent the technique of sewing in on the sewing machine. And I always tell everybody that. I don't want you to say I'm taking credit for inventing these. I'm taking credit for being creative, for showing you different ways of doing it. This is what I do. See, and this was this was made on one of those. This was made on that in, inexpensive uh, Walmart computerized brother sewing machine with a all metal frame inside. Now that's another thing I want to tell you all. If you're buying those really really cheap um, brother machines, one they have where the harp of the machine has a half circle like that. You know, here's your here's your needle, and it's kind of has. Those don't have a, a, a all metal frame. So I don't suggest sewing only over anything heavy with that type of machine. You want to make sure the machine you're using, no matter if it's a basic mechanical machine or a computer machine, that it is an all aluminum frame inside. If you are not sure if it has an all aluminum frame inside, 
write the sewing machine company and ask them if you did not buy it from a dealer. If you bought it from a dealer, call the dealer and ask them, hey, that machine I bought from you doesn't have an all aluminum frame. The reason why you want to use a machine with an all aluminum frame when you're going over heavier things like this is because if it doesn't have an aluminum frame and the needle happens to hit, the machine will twist. Yeah, the machine will actually twist. The top part and the what will twist away from the bottom part, causing damage to the bobbin case and everything. When a machine is made with an all aluminum frame, all the mechanics and everything are screwed into the aluminum frame, and that aluminum frame will not move because it's metal. It will not move. It's solid. So it'll, it'll, it'll hold in place for you as you're going over heavier items. So this, this, these ropes that I'm using are not really that heavy and not that thick. Now, I saw a couple people ask me questions on Facebook groups and say, are these hard? Is it hard to make? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. This is my, this is my philosophy in the way. Like, if you have to ask someone if it's hard, then you don't have the passion. Okay? You don't have the passion for sewing if you're asking if something is hard. You need to be, have that passion and burning in your blood. Eat, sleep, breathe sewing and say, hey, where do I learn how to do that? I want to do that. But if you're saying or saying, oh, is it hard? You don't have the passion. You don't have that in your blood. So just walk away. I teach the youth, let me show you how to do this. You're going to love it. You're going to learn something new. If I were to tell the youth all the time, oh, honey, this is not hard. Do you think the youth will have confidence? They will grow up without confidence if you're always telling them something is hard. They won't want to try something. They'll never, they'll never go beyond. They'll never be able to become self-sufficient and independent. So what you have to say is, I want to learn how to do that. Where can I learn how to do that? Never ask someone who sews, is that hard? Because that's, that's something we don't want to hear. We want to hear you say, show me. Show me. Because this is what you can accomplish when you say, I want to do it myself. I want to learn. You see that? Remember, the youth learn from the adults. If the adults are saying, let's do it, and showing confidence and instilling that confidence into children, they're going to have that confidence and they're going to grow up to be successful, self-sufficient, and independent. If you're always saying something, is it hard, and you're always timid, and the kids are listening to that, chances are those kids are going to grow up to be the same way. And they'll, they'll never be able to accomplish anything on their own. We don't want that. We want everyone to be able to accomplish and create on their own. That's why we have sewing machines. Because what does sewing teach you? Sewing teaches you how to be self-sufficient and independent. Okay? I hope I give you enough to be inspired. I hope I showed you uh, a lot. And take this and learn from my other videos and move forward with all this. You're going to absolutely love making these bowls. You really will. And everyone you gift these to, they're going to cherish them because they are a work of art. The more you do and the more you try, you go from this to this to this to this. Look at the difference just adding a satin stitch around the edge of the bowl in metallic thread. Brings this to a different whole new light. And every time you add something more like this, you're creating more art. These are going to become works of art for you. Okay, look how far I came. Even this is quite unique and different, right? I tried something different. I tried a different color thread on top, a different on the bottom, and I learned from this. You know, I learned from this. I learned never use cotton thread. <laughs> cotton thread shreds so much, fuzzed up my whole machine. Threw that thread right out. You're best to use a poly poly thread or a poly cotton blend thread and just keep an eye on it. And be sure you do clean the bottom of your bobbin case out after all you use several times. Because when you're using a lot of thread and a lot of buildup, you want to keep that bobbin case clean. I showed you in my video when I made, um, which bowl did I make? Yeah, when I made this one, I think, it, yeah, when I made this one, how to clean the bobbin case out on that one brand machine. So, guys, I hope I inspired you. I, you know, I try not to preach, but I do preach in every video. My grandmother used to preach. She used to tell me, get up, get up off your butt and get over here and do this. Come on, let me show you. She would never, she would never sit there and tell you to do something. She would always show you. She would always participate with you, right? Whereas I had a father who would sit there and give orders and he would never get up off his butt to help you or show you or teach you. He would just bark at you. And that was the difference between my grandmother and my father. And I think I have a mixture of both of them where I bark, but I actually show you. I sit down and work with you. And that's what I do. I want everyone to succeed. Okay? So, thank God for my grandmother, because if I was just raised by my father, I would be sitting there not doing this today. I'd be relying on someone else to do it for me. Uh, and that's not... 
that's not how my grandmother was. My grandmother was, she got her hands dirty. She wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. And she was very self-sufficient and very independent. And I learned that from her. And I, got, I missed her every day of my life because she wasn't afraid to get in there and do the job. She worked in a foundry melting steel next to men. And every Friday night, she was at the hair salon getting her hair done. So she went to work in a foundry looking like a lady, but coming home smelling like a man who worked in a foundry. All that soot and everything. But boy, I'm telling you what, she was a lady from, she was a lady from the head to the bottom of her toes, but she worked like a man. And not like my father, but she worked like a man. You know what I'm saying. I remember we were going to church one day. She asked me to go to church on Sunday with her. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm walking alongside of her and I'm talking and I'm looking up at the church and I look to the side of me and she wasn't there. I'm like, Grandma. And I turn around and look to the back. She was pulling weeds. She was pulling weeds in her Sunday clothes out of the, out of the, uh, the crack in the, in the, in the sidewalk. And I said, what are you doing? She goes, we've got to pull these weeds. Got to keep the house of God looking nice. I'm like, but they hire people to do that. She goes, oh, I can do it. It only takes a couple minutes. That's the kind of woman my grandmother was, and that's the kind of person I've learned to become. Let me get in there and do it. So I want all of you to be like that too. I want you all of you to come to me and say, let me get in there and do it also. Be like my grandmother. All right? Love you all. Happy holidays. If I don't talk to you soon, which I'm sure I'll do in another video, but let this be inspirational to you all. All right? And be more like my grandma if you're not. Love you. Bye.